Hello everyone and welcome to another video once again. This time we're going to be choosing between the 2015 Hornby Flying Scotsman released with a little booklet in it or the Class A1 Backman Tornado. I think I'm voting more towards so I'm leaving my favourite to last so I'm going to do Tornado in this episode. So move this and that. That's a special video, which will include the running. Anyway, here's the Backman Tornado. Now, this one has been detailed a lot, because it was my first proper engine, apart from a limited edition Spencer by Hornby, which I'm going to sell um, soon, soon, soon. Um, so, yeah, I've fitted a Flying Scotsman Express headboard right there. It's not really well fitted because I'm going to get it laminated soon as a laminated copy. It's got the A1 locomotive trust headboard fitted by... It's used by Bluetech because I keep moving it. It used to have super glue up where the Flying Scotsman headboard is, but I changed my mind. Um, the exhaust has been fitted. These golden cylinder cocks, I think they are. Um, and that is around all the detail. Oh, yeah, edged nameplates I've fitted as well. So, yeah, anyway. So, the box includes um, the engine with the tender, of course, an um, exploded diagram, and some details in the packs. A lot of details. I got this on eBay for £80 for my birthday. Boy, is it worth it. I mean,. Well, yeah, yeah, it's very worth it because this is basically brand new. It's super smooth. I think it might have been running. But, yeah, it's very... I'm very happy to have this model. It was one of my first. The camera needs adjusting. There we go. So, now for detail. Because I just interrupted myself with detail. So, as sprung buffers... Right, let me get close up. It's very delicate, so I don't want to break it. Um, it has NEM couplings, I think. I'm not sure. I don't know some NEM couplings. Um, it's got cab detail, which is good. A lot of detail around. Um, yeah, you can barely see the line going through paintwork. Very nice livery. livery. It's, I think it suits it perfectly. I'm very thankful for this being made. And I'm glad it was called Tornado as well, actually, because it's very nice sounding. I was two years old when this entered service in 2008. I was born in 2006. So, yeah, it's got a very good livery, and it's got a bit of annoying little wheels here. I'm not sure what they're called. It's a part of a Pacific, so, yeah, I'm not sure, but it's a bit annoying. On to a tender. The coal is not removable, which is a really big downer, because I would have replaced it with my very own suitable coal. Um, I will move on to a history soon. So, spring buffers, of course. I think these are NEM couplings, I'm not very sure. Um, oh my god, the camera needs adjusting very badly. Uh, I'm sorry about this camera, it's an iPad. And I use blue tack to keep it still, but it's absolutely useless. I'm not... I mean, it, I really am sorry about this, honestly. Jesus. It's the best I can do until I get on the piece of track right here. Anyway, yeah, it's got a very nice British Railways sign on the tender. Um, yeah, it's pretty lightweighted, but pretty solid, I guess. I'm pretty sure this is made out of plastic. For locos and all, that's definitely metal for sure. Um, but yeah, anyway, it's got a lot of detail at the back of tender. Very nice, very nice indeed. Um, little step ladders. Um, yeah, it's a very nice tender altogether. Anyway, I'm not going to couple them up because I don't. I'll only do that for when I get these running. Um, yeah. Right, I'm just doing this. <coughs> I'm sorry, I think I've got a bit of a cold after yesterday on the Yorkshireman trip. 
anyway, here's history, so, in some, 1989, I think, I'm not very sure, um, I can't remember properly, at least, um, a group of enthusiasts, because there's no preserved A1 Pacifics, started to build a new one to keep it, um, East Coast Main Line, um, have its proper, like, mainliners, I'm, I'm not so sure on the history, but anyway, um, they started to build it, um, come livery when they finished it, um, well, it was built, it finished building in 2008, and come livery that was in is Railworks Grey, basically it's all grey, didn't even have a name yet, and then they gave it a name, and then obviously they painted it in the livery right now. Recently, um, in 2017, I think it's 12th of April, they did a little test, steam one, to see how fast she can go, because they were running out of places, because their network is getting even more faster and busier. So they needed to see if they can prove to British Railways that if they got up to 100 miles an hour on this run, which she actually reached 101.6, I think, I'm not sure, um, they could let her run at 90 from now on, which I think is now confirmed, which is very lucky of us. Anyway, she's pulled a lot of expresses, um, I'm pretty sure the Pul British Pullman, the Cathedral's Express, the Red Rose, and a bunch of others, I'm not so sure of them. But yeah, she's been in four liveries, the Railworks Grey, the British Railways Apple Green, uh, the BR Early Crest and Late Crest Green, the and the Ra British Railways Experiment. Ex I'm not sure what it's called, but basically dark blue. The one that Sir Nigel Gresley was in until it went into the works in the NRM. I went to go see it, and while well, we had three hours or four hours spare when we got off the auctionman. So yeah, that is basically the history. She has been, she's been an absolute amazing engine for all the years she's been in so far. And let's hope we, her story will not end soon. Um. So yeah. Anyway, that's the end of this video. It's quite long. I'm sorry, but it's a bit it because this has been detailed so much. It's very special video so yeah anyway goodbye